success look like for the Gators in 2023? Vegas is low on the Gators. ESPN might be a little higher, but we're chatting with the best in the business, Andy Staples, about what he thinks we'll see from UF this season. Okay, so Vegas has UF over under five and a half wins. You mentioned to me before that you think a little bit better. So you think seven or eight wins and that's a, a successful season for Florida? Oh, I think I think people should be pretty happy with that, given given what what the situation was that, that Billy Napier inherited, given what the roster was. So I, I think that would be definite progress. And again, I want to see not just that. Like, I'm not expecting them to beat Georgia. I'm not, maybe maybe LSU, but probably not. Like, I want to see how they play against teams like that. I think, I think how you play in, in those games matters just as much as how many you win. So that's, that's the part I'm interested in. And like Utah, they're, they're a touchdown underdog in that game. We don't know if Cam Rising's even going to play. You know, sure. Kyle Whittingham has said that it's going to come down probably to, to that week deciding whether he's ready to play or not because he, he tore his ACL in the Rose Bowl. So yeah. we don't know where that, where that situation is. Uh, the Tennessee game, again, I'm not assuming Tennessee comes in and, and beats Florida. I think that's – I want to see Tennessee first. I want to see Joe Milton. If, does Joe Milton look like he looked in the Orange Bowl? Because if he does, everybody should be very afraid. Yeah. But if he doesn't, then – it may be a little bit different year for the old Vols. And then I think at Kentucky is going to be, that's going to be a tough one. Cause I think Kentucky is going to be a lot better and is going to give a lot of people problems. And Florida lost to Kentucky at home last year. So, you know, that those are, those are the games that matter. Like Arkansas, and Missouri late in the season. What do you do against those teams? Those are the teams you should be beating fairly sure. regularly. So where are you at? And I think that like that Arkansas game coming off the Georgia game will be a great, litmus test for where this program is so if florida only wins five games mm -hmm. how hot is napier's seat into year three we've talked in in the past about year three you should know which direction you're going yep. but they also have the hardest schedule that they've ever had that year how hot is the seat and what win total do you need in year three if you only got five in year two it would be blazing but you would actually probably reset expectations for year three. So if you only won five in year two, if you won eight in year three, then you're probably still okay as long as you're still recruiting well. But that's the other piece of it. How are you recruiting? Like if he's recruiting the way he is right now, probably fine. If it, it comes a situation where they go, we're not sure you're going to be here mm -hmm. and he can't land those guys, that's a different, different story entirely. So a lot has been said about Graham Mertz. What are you hearing and what do you think he needs to do for it to be considered a success for him this season? Just play within himself. Just you know, Graham Mertz was the highest rated quarterback who ever signed with Wisconsin. He, he was a, a very big time recruit and has a lot of good tools. It just didn't yeah. work out at Wisconsin for whatever reason. And remember that coaching staff did get fired. So, yeah. you know, some people say, well, Graham Mertz, was part of the cause of that maybe, but it may have been that Paul Christ and company were, were getting stale. So I want to see what he can do in terms of just running the offense, managing the game. Florida has really good backs. They should be able to run the ball. Well, that should help in play action. That should give him a little bit of extra time. The line's going to have to give him time. It can't look like it looked in the spring game. If it looks like it looked in the spring game, it doesn't matter what Graham Mertz does, but right. My, my guess is it will probably look a little better than that. So I just he doesn't have to be Superman. And it, it, it's crazy because I, you just saw the news that, that Anthony Richardson is going to start that first preseason game for the Colts. And my thought initially was, was they're going to start Gardner Minshew for most, and, and they might still for the regular season. But if Anthony Richardson were to come into the NFL and look great, that's going to look bad for Billy Napier. But... My guess is there's a little bit of a learning curve, and and we'll see that. But with Mertz, he can he can turn that that reputation around, turn that notion around, where if he can take a guy who, at Wisconsin, was not getting it done, and suddenly is competitive in the SEC, well, that's going to look good. That's going to look good to future quarterback recruits, and uh, you know, gives Florida a chance to to maybe have something special going into DJ Lagway showing up. So what is the one area where you think the Gators are going to surprise some people? 
Wanted to give some love to Melden Law. They are our newest partner here at A Peak Inside Gators Football. Their support is going to allow me to take this channel to a new level. They specialize in car accidents, personal injury, and more, all while being an official partner of the Florida Gators. If you are hurt and God forbid, in any sort of accident of any kind, let Melden Law be the ones to help you in your time of need. Check out their Facebook for a Florida Georgia ticket giveaway. We'll link that in the description as well. They are Gators and Gators support Gators. D-line. That's that's the one everybody keeps coming back to, that they are deeper and better there. And it's it's crazy because you're like, well, where was that? If you had these guys on the roster, they didn't, they didn't have all those guys on the roster. Uh, Cam Jackson came from Memphis. Caleb Banks came from Louisville. So they didn't, they didn't have the group they have now. And, and chemistry matters. And, and, you know, some of those guys maybe weren't old enough, weren't quite mature enough to, to contribute yet, the younger ones. So that's the one where you have to have a, a stout defensive line in the SEC. You will get manhandled if you don't. You mm-hmm. saw that with Florida the last few years. If they're better there, I think it makes everything better throughout the whole program. It makes everything better for both sides of the ball. All right. So you mentioned the chemistry, which I agree is really important. How much more of this team being Napier's guy, does that help the team overall? Oh, that helps any team. It, when, when you have people who were recruited with a coherent philosophy that where everybody, you know, you were looking for the same thing in each of these guys mentally and, and personality wise, that can't do anything but help. All right, since we're talking about 2023, let me ask you a couple of a question about a couple of US rivals. You've talked about Tennessee some. What are your overall impressions of Georgia, LSU, and Florida State this upcoming season? Georgia's still the best team in the country. You know, whether they win the national title or not is is depending on circumstance. I mean, think about it. Nobody's three-peated since 1936. So it's just hard to do that. But they still have the best roster. They're probably going to have the best offensive line. They're going to have a bunch more first rounders. Like they, they're, they're just loaded. And Kirby Smart has got it rolling, similar to the way that Nick Saban had it rolling. And and I, in fact, Nick Saban is trying to get back there, and Kirby Smart is making that awfully hard on him. LSU is a little more interesting. LSU has some of that super premium talent that Georgia and, L- uh, Georgia and Alabama have, but not at every position. And surprisingly, not at the positions that they usually do. Like their secondary and their running backs, still not where they want to be. And that's why Brian Kelly, I thought, he's tried to manage expectations because he, he knows when they won the West last year, everybody, okay, now you're going to win the SEC and the national title. They do have some players capable of, of making a team a potential contender. You know, they're, they're two offensive tackles who are only sophomores, Will Campbell and Emory Jones. They're awesome. Uh, Harold Perkins Jr., probably the most exciting defensive player in the country. Uh, Mason Smith, they get back at D-tackle. He, he got hurt five plays into the Florida State game last year, and you never saw him again. So they have that level of talent. But are they deep enough? And Brian Kelly's like, I think we're a year away from being deep enough. So that's one, given where Florida plays them in the season, we don't know where they're going to be. You know, they could be, they could be dealing with you know, some of that depth stuff, or if they've had good injury luck, they could just be unstoppable <laughs> by that point. Um, okay. What about FSU? So Florida state's uh, an interesting one because they're, they're really old. They've done a really good job with their collective of making sure the guys who are, are good and proven good college football players that they get taken care of. And so mm-hmm. that's how they've kept Jared verse. That's how they kept Jordan Travis. And I think, just from a maturity standpoint, they're going to be so much better than they have been. From a talent standpoint, I still don't know that they're that much better. I want to see them against LSU. See how they stack up talent-wise. Now that That's Keon, what I'm ask you. how is that going to game going to right. go in three weeks? Yeah, now Keon Coleman, the the transfer from Michigan State, I think he's going to help them a lot. Uh, you mm-hmm. saw them unlock the potential of Johnny Wilson last year. Arizona State couldn't. And, and they figured out how to make this 6'7 dude a really scary target in the, in the passing game. So, you know, I think offensive line-wise they should be better. But, yeah, I want to see that offensive line against LSU's defensive line with Mason Smith playing. With You know, they're, they're much deeper than they were 
this time last year. That that LSU Florida State game last year was a slop fest. Like I expect this one to be played at a very high level, and I expect the the fan base of whoever loses to think the world is ending. Even though if it's close, like it doesn't matter who wins or loses, they both could go on and and win their conference and win the national title if they if it if it fell that way. But uh, but yes, we will completely overreact to the result of that game. As always, right? That's of course. That's it's the first. It's the first week. We can't help uh, it. Crown our titles and you know bury the losers. Well, thank you for joining me. Congrats on the new role at On Three. Super excited to continue to watch your stuff there. Been a long time fan. Tell us a little bit more about the move, uh, what you're doing, and where folks can find your content. So we are doing a show. Pretty much every day. So Sunday through Thursday, we're, we're doing a show and it, it premieres on the On3 YouTube page at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And okay. so uh, most of those shows I'm doing live. Now, some of them some of them are not live because we've got to get everything recorded and, and have different schedules with our interviews with coaches. But uh, a lot of them I'm doing live. You can interact with me during the show. And it's it's been a lot of fun so far because... You know, there's just not a lot of college football shows anymore. Like ESPN doesn't make those anymore. So we want to give you a show you can watch. And then everything we do is then cut up into segments and you can find it however you need it. We're going to have it on YouTube. We'll have it on X. I can't call it. It's Twitter. But it's so weird. Twitter, I know. It just... feels so strange. But But we'll have those videos there. And then if you want to listen in podcast form, we're on every major podcast platform. So however you want the show, you can get it. And, you know, we'll, we'll try to make sure it is serving the real college football fans because that's what, you know, this is what I'd be talking about with my friends if I, didn't have, if I didn't do it for a living. So this conversation we just had, we would have had on the phone. Like, it is no different. And so that's what I want the show to be. And we have lots of coaches coming on. We've, we've had a lot of fun the last week with some of the, like Biff Pogey, the, the coach at Charlotte, just fascinating, yeah. the former hedge fund manager, like learning about him. Uh, I had Billy Lucci from Texags telling stories that didn't make the Johnny Manziel documentary. Um, I just got done interviewing Sonny Dykes for Sunday's show. Uh, he's talking about how, how special last year's team was and what do you, how do you follow that up with a, you know, with a team that just made it to the national title game. It's it's really interesting. He also talks about his 455 pound freshman offensive lineman, which Florida fans, you know, you've watched Des Watson, you know how this works. So yeah. it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Did you tell T Sonny Dykes that there's some film out there that he can watch in areas where he can work on it? Because uh, we all saw that in 4K in the national championship game. Oh but, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so so much. Tell everybody. Um, what your Twitter handle is or X handle. X. Uh, Andy underscore Staples on X on Instagram and then Andy Staples on Facebook. All right. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Allie. Thanks to Andy for joining me today to chat about UF in 2023. We spoke deeper about what to expect long-term from Billy Napier. And if you missed that, you can click right here to get caught up.